Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Tuesday, September 15th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines, and it's all gonna take less than 10 minutes. So hang tight, we're gonna take a look at what Governor Mike DeWine discussed in his latest coronavirus press conference, plus a look at the school report card sent out by the Ohio Department of Education today, which look a little bit different, of course, due to coronavirus. But before we dive too deep into any of that, I wanna get you caught up on the latest coronavirus data. So today there were 1,001 new cases reported and that's compared to the 21 day average of 1,095. There were 87 deaths compared to the 21 day average of 24 with 103 new hospitalizations compared to the 21 day average of 73 and 14 new ICU admissions compared to the 21 day average of 10. And Tuesday brought the highest reported increase in deaths since early May and the third highest since the pandemic began. And DeWine made clear that the emphasis is on the word reported. While these were deaths reported in the last 24 hours, they all didn't happen in the last 24 hours. So basically, coroners have up to six months to certify a death certificate. While it usually doesn't take quite that long, DeWine said this is often causing a delay between when a death occurs and when it's actually reported in the data. So look at this. This represents the coronavirus deaths reported today, spread out by the date that they actually occurred. So most of these coronavirus related deaths reported today actually happened over the last month, and one even goes as far back as May 3rd. So this is important to keep in mind when we actually look at the daily data when it comes to coronavirus related deaths. But let's go forward a little bit here and look at the cases per 100,000 people. So Putnam County stayed at the top of that list with the counties with the most cases per 100,000 people. And that county was reported to have 280.6 cases per 100,000, which is more than double the CDC threshold for high incidence, which is 100 cases. Locally, Henry County jumped up on the list to the fifth spot with 192.5 cases per 100,000. So these are all things we are going to be keeping a bit of a close eye on. And according to a ruling handed down today by the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas, Ohio law says election boards are allowed to have more than one drop box for the upcoming election. Franklin County Common Pleas Judge Richard Fry ruled that LaRose's directive prohibiting counties from adding any additional ballot drop boxes was arbitrary and unreasonable. He said that legal authority to permit boards of elections to have more ballot drop boxes does in fact lie with LaRose, who had previously argued that adding new boxes would be under the Ohio General Assembly's purview. But even with this ruling, a statement released by LaRose's office this afternoon made clear that at this point, his directive would remain in place because while the judge ruled on the legality of adding more drop boxes, he didn't rule on placing any injunction on LaRose's directive. So in a nutshell, while the courts have ruled it would be possible to add more drop boxes, LaRose has said he is sticking with his directive, only allowing one per county. And a new survey by the Ohio Restaurant Association is shedding light on the continuous struggles restaurants are facing during this pandemic. According to a business impact poll completed by restaurant owners and referencing information from August 17th through the 30th, 80%. 80% of Ohio restaurants are not expecting to break even this year under the current conditions. President and CEO of the Ohio Restaurant Association, John Barker, says that the Paycheck Protection Program through the federal government provided a lifeline for thousands of restaurants, but now that money has run out and the association is advocating for another round. Because Barker says that according to this poll, right around 50% of respondents said that if conditions stay the way they are today, they don't think they can survive in 2021. And now winter is approaching, so what's next? Well, the ORA is working to create outside dining, which would include igloos or enclosed patios. And Barker says for some, it could mean five to 10 more tables, but that could be the difference between closing down and staying open. But the findings weren't all bad. 7% of restaurants are seeing their year over year sales increasing by 20 to 50%. So that's a little bit encouraging. And for more on this survey's findings, head over to our website, w2l.com. And for information on local restaurants that you can support, just check out the Takeout Takeover playlist we have right here on our YouTube page. And yesterday, DeWine signed House Bill 606, which ensures 
civil immunity to individual schools, healthcare providers, businesses, and other entities from lawsuits arising from exposure, transmission, or contraction of COVID-19 or any mutation of the virus as long as they weren't showing reckless or intentional or willful misconduct. The new law also shields healthcare providers from liability in regards to the care and services they provide during the pandemic, unless again, they were acting recklessly or displaying intentional misconduct. That immunity is set to last from March 9th, 2020, the date of the emergency declaration through September 30th, 2021. And the legislation will become law after 90 days. And since we're already talking about schools, the Ohio Department of Education has released the 2020 Ohio report cards. Now, because of the coronavirus, the administration of most state tests were canceled for the last portion of the 2019-2020 school year. And because of that, this year's report cards do not contain overall grades for any district or building, individual grades or ratings for given components or performance measures. The report cards also don't include any information about student performance on state tests, the academic growth of students students during the school year and the extent to which achievement gaps are being addressed for students. So what exactly is on the report card? This edition provides information on graduation rates, prepared for success indicators, and some other measures. Plus, much of the usual demographic and enrollment data is available along with other district and school operational details. For a look at how your kid's school district compares and for a guide on how to actually read that data, head over to our website, you guessed it, WTOL.com. And as always, before I go, let's take a bit of a look at some, some fun news for once. So I know we haven't even hit Halloween yet, but Aldi is already preparing for the winter holiday season. The chain has announced that its 2020 collection of advent calendars will be on sale soon, starting with the popular wine advent calendar, which hits the shelves Wednesday, November 4th, so just after election day for 70 bucks, which is exciting in itself, but wait, that's not all. Aldi has revealed plans to offer more than 20 advent calendar varieties this year, which includes other options for look beer, hard seltzer, coffee, cheese, chocolate, and so much more. The additional advent calendars will be released throughout November and into early December, so if you are interested, keep your eyes peeled. All these advent calendars have created an intense fan base, so they're known to sell out pretty quickly, and the stores made clear that they are going until supplies last. So if you're willing to wait in line for a calendar filled with wine, make sure you're prepared. But that is all I have for you today. For more on our top headlines, make sure you check us out nightly at 5, 6, and 11 on Channel 11, of course. And if you like these videos and you want to keep seeing more, make sure you like the video and you subscribe to our channel. You'll get a little alert to your phone whenever we post a really great video. But with all of that being said, I hope you get out there and have a very happy Tuesday.